Hello and welcome to Baiju's exam prep. Welcome to the daily quiz for today. Before we begin, we have an important announcement. This Wednesday, that is on the 30th of November, we shall be holding an important workshop on why civil services to help you understand why the civil services is a great career choice. So do attend this session live at 7 p.m. exclusively on the Baiju's exam prep app. and i shall help you simplify the path towards cracking this prestigious examination and also don't forget to subscribe to our official telegram channel for more updates on current affairs so with this let's take a look at the first question the popular kalanga mela is held annually at gangtok imphal dehradun or aswan this question has been chosen because the hindu carries this image which depicts the kalanga mela which is being held in dehradun See the Kalang Mela is a annual fair held at Dehradun to pay tribute to the legendary Kalanga War Memorial. This fair is organized every year to pay tribute to the brave Gorkha soldiers who fought against the British in the battle of Nalapani which was the first battle in the Anglo-Nepalese war. Even though the Gorkha soldiers were defeated in this battle in 1814 it has been reported that The British were very impressed with the valor of the Gorkhas and to pay tribute to their adversaries apparently the British erected the war memorial hence this is considered to be the only monument in the history of warfare anywhere in the world to have been erected by a victorious army to pay tribute to their adversaries during this mela the traditional culture of Gorkhas is brought out and celebrated at Dehradun and this can be an important topic for your prelims So clearly the correct answer is option C Dehradun. Now let's take a look at the second question. Which of the following statements are correct? The China International Development Cooperation Agency or CITCA is a foreign aid agency of the People's Republic of China. It recently hosted the China Indian Ocean Region Forum with 19 countries from the region including India. See the China International Development Cooperation Agency is indeed a newly established foreign aid agency of the PRC or the People's Republic of China it was established in 2018 by China to provide development aid and assistance to other countries through this china has been funding key projects in several countries and thus helps china to run its influence operations abroad so recently this chinese aid agency reportedly organized a summit known as China Indian Ocean Region Forum in which a total of 19 countries participated the conference was held at the Yunnan province and representatives from nearly 18 countries apart from China participated including from Indonesia Pakistan Myanmar Sri Lanka Bangladesh Nepal Afghanistan Iran Oman South Africa Kenya Mozambique Tanzania Seychelles Madagascar Mauritius Djibouti and also three international organizations as you can see china had invited representatives from countries across the indian ocean including south asian countries the island nations african nations and also countries in southeast asia and west asia the primary theme of discussion was focused on the blue economy model to promote trade and sustainable growth in the indian ocean and curiously india was left out of the conference thus sparking concerns about china's intentions in organizing this conference however later it has been clarified that australia and maldives did not send any official representatives to this regional forum it was only few former leaders of australia and Mal- maldives who took part in the conference in a non official capacity this is what has been reported in this article in the hindu but the very fact that china could organize such a large conference and bring together nearly 18 important nations of the indian ocean is of concern for india as it marks china's rising presence and influence all across the indian ocean india has always seen itself as a traditional power in the indian ocean and engages closely with these countries through groupings such as the indian ocean rim association at which china already holds the status of a dialogue partner apart from this india has organized the indian ocean naval symposium and has implemented the sagar doctrine of prime minister modi to ensure security and growth for all countries in the region even though india is clearly the predominant power 
China has gradually stepped up its influence, especially in the last two decades, through its Belt and Road Initiative. And the China Indian Ocean Region Forum, which was organized by SIDCA recently, is seen in the same context. It is seen as a Chinese attempt to counter India's influence in the Indian Ocean. So based on this understanding, we can clearly say that statement 1 is correct, but statement 2 is incorrect, because India was not invited to this regional forum. So the correct answer is option A, 1 only. Now let's take a look at the third question. The construction of Rupal nuclear power plant in Bangladesh is being led by Russia and Ukraine, Russia and China, Russia and India, Russia and Pakistan. This topic is in news because the Hindu carries an interview with the Deputy Foreign Minister of Bangladesh following India's invite to Bangladesh to be a guest country at the G20 summit next year as India holds the presidency of G20. So the country holding the presidency of G20 gets to invite guest countries to participate in the summit and India has chosen to invite important partners such as Egypt, Bangladesh, United Arab Emirates, Mauritius, Netherlands, Nigeria, Oman, Singapore and Spain. So the invite sent out by India to Bangladesh is a representation of the growth of Bangladesh as a significant economy and a strategic partner for India. In this interview, the Deputy Foreign Minister makes a mention of the Rupur nuclear power plant which is coming up in Bangladesh and it happens to be the first nuclear project in Bangladesh. This project is being executed by India and Russia together and the agreement was signed back in 2018. While Russia is executing the critical part of this project by supplying the nuclear material and the nuclear reactors and the technology behind it, India's assistance is limited to non-critical support in the construction of the plant. India is not in a position to supply nuclear material and nuclear reactors to other countries because India is still not a member of the Nuclear Suppliers Group or the NSG. This joint initiative between India and Russia marks the first time that the two countries are executing such a project in a third country and also happens to be the first nuclear project for India where India is playing a role in a foreign country. So the correct answer is option C. It is Russia and India. Now coming to question number 4. Which of the following is a joint military exercise between India and Malaysia? Is it Mitra Shakti, Harimau Shakti, Surya Kiran or Garuda Shakti? See, India participates in several important bilateral and multilateral military exercises involving the three branches of the armed forces. So here, I have provided a list of bilateral exercises involving the Indian Army and foreign armies. This topic is in news because according to this press release from the Defence Ministry, India and Malaysia are commencing a joint military exercise between their respective armies from today which has been codenamed as Harimau Shakti 2022. The exercise, which mainly focuses on jungle warfare, will help both the sides to learn from each other's skills and also build interoperability in order to boost relations between the two armies. So for the sake of prelims, you should be familiar with the important military exercises of India. And here you can go through the list of military exercises between Indian Army and foreign armies. You can clearly see that Mitra Shakti is an exercise between India and Sri Lanka. Whereas Garuda Shakti is an exercise between India and Indonesia. And Surya Kiran is an exercise between India and Nepal. So similarly, go through the other exercises as well. And based on this understanding, you can clearly say that the right answer for this question is option B. Now let's take up a question from this year's prelims paper. Which one of the following statements best describes the role of B cells and T cells in the human body? They protect the body from environmental allergens. They alleviate the body's pain and inflammation. They act as immunosuppressants in the body. They protect the body from the diseases caused by pathogens. The correct answer is option D. B cells and T cells are a part of our immune system, which are released from our lymphocytes as a part of the immune response generated by our white blood cells in order to target the antigens of harmful pathogens in order to provide antibody response and protect us from harmful diseases. So option D is the right answer. Now coming to the fact of the day, let's understand as to how India chooses the Republic Day chief guest as this topic is in news because India has invited Egyptian President Mr. Abdel Fattah El-Sisi to grace this year's Republic Day parade 
as India's chief guest. Now this honor which is bestowed by India during its Republic Day celebrations has a great deal of symbolic value especially in diplomacy. Because this happens to be the highest honor that India bestows upon its guest countries or friendly countries as far as protocol is concerned. During each year's Republic Day celebrations, India chooses to invite a president or a prime minister from a friendly foreign nation and bestows them with the highest honor and the best possible reception in terms of protocol. This visit is full of symbolism and in diplomacy, symbolism holds a lot of value. Because we are not just inviting the leader of a friendly country to take part in our celebrations, but we are also sending out a diplomatic message to that country and to that leader that India seeks closer relations with the country and it expresses our priority in our foreign policy. So this becomes a powerful diplomatic tool every year for the MEA to send out an invite to the right country and the right leader with whom India is seeking to renew our relations and forge new relations with the country. So there is a lot of thought put into this decision by the Ministry of External Affairs and it proceeds only after obtaining the final approval of the Prime Minister and the President. The MEA not just shortlists one chief guest, it will actually come out with a few options based on India's diplomatic priorities and also based on the availability of the respective leaders. Once the shortlist is approved by the PM and the President, the MEA goes ahead to reach out to the respective leaders discreetly because still no formal invite will be extended. MEA will first try to confirm the availability of the leader and will try to work out all the modalities and logistics and then finalizes one name in the shortlist and gets the final approval of the PM and the President to send out the formal invite. While making this crucial decision, the MEA considers a number of aspects including India's relations with the country. Because this invite is full of symbolic value as it signifies that India is going to prioritize its relations with the country for the next year and it gives an opportunity to renew our ties across domains including political, commercial, military, cultural, etc. During the period of Cold War, especially between 1950s and 1960s, when India was firmly committed to the non-aligned movement as a founder of the movement, India would carefully consider the alignment of a country during the Cold War. India would weigh whether this country is aligned with the Western power bloc led by US or is it aligned with the Soviet power bloc or is it non-aligned like India. So this was also playing a key role while considering the chief guest for Republic Day celebrations. So this time the invite has gone out to Egypt which was also one of the founders of the non-aligned movement along with India, Ghana, Indonesia and Yugoslavia. India-Egypt share a very close relationship, not just post-independence, but we also share a historical civilizational relationship. Egypt is a key country in Africa and Egypt has been playing a key role in promoting India's African diplomacy. Egypt has been an active participant in the India-Africa Forum Summit and the two countries are working together in many areas including in the renewable energy sector where India is investing billions of dollars in a strategic project that's coming up in a special economic zone located along the Suez Canal. So with this, I would like to bring my discussion to an end and if you found the initiative to be helpful, do support us by liking the video, share your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.